So what I like to do first is start off kind of at the bottom here and I'm just gonna cut any of this new growth off. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Monday, October 16th here in South Georgia. On today's video, we're gonna do a little figuring around and talk about pruning. So we're gonna revisit why you'd want to prune a fig tree. I'm gonna tell you my favorite kind of pruners to use. And then we're gonna prune some fig trees. We're gonna show you what we would do with a young, smaller tree versus what we would do with an older, established tree. So real quick, let's revisit several reasons why you would want to prune a fig tree. Number one would be space. So maybe you want to keep your fig tree a certain size as opposed to just letting it get massive and sprawling all over the place. So maybe you've got your fig tree in a pot permanently like this one right here. Maybe you're keeping it in a greenhouse, maybe your patio, maybe even indoors. And you don't wanna let this thing get too big because it'll take up too much space and you won't be able to move it around. So you don't wanna prune it and keep it more bushy as opposed to letting it get really tall. Or maybe you've got a few fig trees planted in rows like we do and got some mulch around them and you don't want those limbs slapping you every time you ride by with a lawnmower. So you want to prune them up a little bit and kind of keep them where they are. And the second reason you'd want to prune a fig tree is to promote more new growth on the tree. As we've talked about in the past, figs are formed on new growth mainly. So the more new growth we get, the more figs we should get. And so when you cut the tip of a fig limb, like we did this one right here last year, you'll get a bunch of extra new branches there, a lot more new growth, and a lot more figs. And then the third reason you'd want to prune a fig tree is for rejuvenation purposes. Now this is something I've been digging into a lot recently, understanding the process and understanding why you'd want to do it. So maybe you've got an older tree like our big brown turkey tree over there that's kind of slowed down production wise and you want to rejuvenate it with some aggressive pruning. Or maybe you've got a smaller tree that just never really did anything. You can get it back going with a little pruning oftentimes. Now before we do some actual pruning, let's talk about the different kind of pruners out there and the ones we like to use. So this is called a bypass pruner and this is what most people are probably more familiar with. These work well for smaller stuff. I've had this pair right here for a long time and it works good for doing smaller twigs, smaller limbs, but for heavy duty pruning, I don't care for these as much. So what I prefer to use is called an anvil pruner. So you've got this little anvil piece here and the blade presses down on that to make your cut. So I've had this particular pair of Felco anvil pruners for several years now, no telling how many cuts I've made with these. I did have to take them apart the other day, give them a little grease job, give them a little maintenance work, but well, they're back in good shape. Now I have heard several people say they don't like anvil pruners because they do too much tissue damage. So as you're smashing the piece of wood onto that anvil to cut it, it's kind of smashing the tissue. And I can see where that could happen, but I haven't found it to be a problem. I love my anvil pruners and they just cut thicker pieces of wood a lot better than these bypass pruners. If I'm just doing some light duty stuff, I may grab the bypass pruners, but most often times, I'm going with the heavy duty anvil pruners. So now let's do some actual pruning. We'll start off talking about some strategies for young trees that are only a year old, and then we'll show you some strategies for older, more established trees. Now it's important to note that every variety is a little different in the way it grows. So some varieties like these LSU Scots black trees here have given us some nice branching just in the first year. Crazy to think that these trees are only a year old. So if I wasn't gonna take cuttings from these trees, I probably wouldn't do a whole lot of pruning with these. So let's contrast those trees with this Malta black tree, which is also a year old, was planted at the same time those other trees were. But this variety tends to be a little slower growing than the Scots black. And this tree also doesn't get quite as much sunshine because it's tucked over here in the corner of the orchard. So with this tree, we just have one main stem. We don't have any branching currently. We have some figs forming on there, but they're probably not gonna have time to ripen before we get our first frost. So what we wanna do with a tree like this is encourage some branching along here and at the top of the tree. Now that probably won't happen until next year, but pruning it now 
we'll you know encourage it to produce more new growth next year and we should get some nice figs off of it so I'm just basically going to cut the top out of this tree now you could cut it anywhere along here you wanted to cut it I could cut it all the way down here if I wanted to if I wanted to keep this tree kind of really small and dwarf looking but I'm going to just cut the top out of it right here and then next year we should get a lot of new growth out of the top we should also get a lot of branches coming out the side here so for a new tree if you're not already getting a lot of branching on it just cut the tip out of it and that should encourage a lot more new growth and probably increase your likelihood of getting some delicious figs in the second year now let's talk about how we handle older more established trees and most of the trees out here are around four or five years old so we've already started cutting on some of these trees as we've started propagating trees that will be on our website next spring. So for example, this Violet de Bordeaux tree here, already taken about 120 cuttings off this tree. I may prune it back a little bit more once the tree goes completely dormant, but that gives you an idea of just how much we cut it back. So this tree looks pretty much like this Canadria tree right here that we're gonna cut on in a minute. And we cut it back this much and it will produce a ton of new growth next year and look basically just like that again next year and right here we have a really good side-by-side -side example of the benefits of pruning so i've got two mary lane trees right here this tree i didn't prune at all last year and i didn't hardly get any figs off of it this year this tree next to it i pruned it a decent amount not as much as I should have but we can see a lot more new growth and a lot more fig formation so that pruning is almost necessary with this variety otherwise you just don't get a lot of new growth on it and just don't get a lot of figs so I'm gonna cut all my Mary Lane trees back pretty hard this year because I like what I'm seeing on this one that we did prune so now let's do some heavy pruning on an established tree and we're gonna use this Canadria tree right behind me. Yes, there are still some green leaves on it. Yes, there are some figs still forming on it, but I need to go ahead and get this variety propagated for next year. So, you know, we're gonna miss out on a few figs that wouldn't ripen later, but it's better to go ahead and get these going in the greenhouse. They'll propagate a lot faster right now when it's still a little warm as opposed to into November and December when it cools off a lot more. So let me back up here and let you get a good mental image of what this tree looks like because we're about to hack it back a good bit. So although we will be using everything we cut here for propagation, I'm not going to bore you with cutting up these longer sticks into smaller propagation pieces. We've already covered that on another video but I do got me a bucket of water over there I'm gonna put these sticks in that bucket of water and then I'll cut them up later so what I like to do first is start off kind of at the bottom here and I'm just gonna cut any of this new growth off the bottom of the tree or around the base of the tree I want to clean up this base because during the winter or in the next month or so what I'll do is I'll come alongside every tree check my irrigation fittings make sure all that's working and then we'll put some more pine straw down around the trees a lot easier to do that we don't have a bunch of limbs sticking out right here so we've got our anvil pruners here and we're just going to start cutting sticking them in our bucket of water some of these you might have to dig the mulch out the way to get a good clean cut there along the trunk of the tree like this one right here get that one get that one and we got a couple more underneath here so we'll just start cleaning this up and then we'll kind of work our way up the tree all right now that we've got the base of the tree nice and clean there we'll start working our way up and we're not going to cut every single limb that's sticking out here i'm going to focus on the new growth that i see because that's what i want for cuttings and so kind of my strategy here is if there's a piece of new growth that's long enough for a cutting i'm going to get it if there's a piece of new growth that's only a couple inches long a lot of times i'll leave it and that's what it looks like when we're done so we took all that there off 
this canadria tree and all that will get chopped up and planted either later this afternoon or tomorrow now, i know that may seem harsh and a little bit aggressive but i promise you this will promote a ton of new growth and keep your tree from eventually getting stunted like that mary lane tree back there so don't be afraid to cut it back. There's no perfect science to it. A lot of the way I cut it has to do with just keeping it from sticking out here in my pathways too much. But I'm not worried about this tree being big and bountiful and fruitful again next year. So we talked about pruning a one year old tree. We showed you how we prune a four to five year old tree. Now let's talk about this rejuvenation pruning, which is something you would need to do if you haven't been regularly pruning your trees and they become stunted and don't produce a lot of fruits for you. So this big brown turkey tree that I've showed y'all many times before needs some serious rejuvenation pruning. We're not going to do it today. I'm going to wait for a nice cool winter day when there's nothing else going on around here because I'm going to have to get a chainsaw. And I'm basically going to cut back these big, big limbs as much as I can. And we're going to let some of this younger growth thrive in here. And we should start getting more figs that way. So this is going to be quite the project. That's why I'm not going to tackle it today. Now on the complete opposite end of the size spectrum, I've got this little tree right here. This is a variety called Sangui Dolce. And this tree has been here for I think three, maybe four years. As you can see, it's never really done anything. Got a few green figs on there right now, but they're probably not going to ripen this year. So we need to try to stimulate some more growth on this little tree here. So although this tree is tiny, what I'm gonna do is come in here and cut the tips off of all these branches and hopefully stimulate some new growth next year. I was asking some people on a fig forum online what to do about trees that just never take off and they were saying this is a great way to do it. Call it rejuvenation pruning. So we should see new branches popping out here next year and hopefully this tree will finally give us some nice figs. So I hope that information was useful, whether you're just getting into figs and got a couple young trees, or maybe you've got an older established tree like our brown turkey tree, it just seems to produce fewer and fewer figs every year. And if you haven't tried growing figs, you should be, because little ones like Tai Tai loves coming out here and eating all these fresh figs right off the tree. What'd you tell me earlier? Eat figs every day. Eat figs every day, that's right. Good for you, and they taste good too. And if you haven't already, don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where you can find that Coop Grow fertilizer, which works great on fig trees, by the way. And if you want to know more about growing fig trees in pots, maybe you don't have anywhere to put one in your yard, but want to grow one in a pot, check out this video right here where we'll show you how to plant a fig in a pot and why you would want to grow one in a pot. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.